Hello all. Let us study today about PGPR that is plant growth promoting rhizobacteria. Now before we get into the topic, let me briefly tell you about rhizosphere. So rhizosphere is a region of soil found around the roots of plants. This region is having a very high microbial load and it is influenced by the exudates of the roots. The organisms which are present in the rhizosphere can include bacteria as well as fungi and even some viruses. They, the root exudates have an effect on the rhizosphere flora and the rhizosphere flora in turn affect the plant that they are associated with. The PGPRs that is plant growth promoting rhizobacteria are bacteria which colonize this rhizosphere and when they colonize this rhizosphere they improve the growth of plants directly or they act as biocontrol agents against pathogens. Now they cannot act as a biocontrol agent or as an inhibitory agent against major pathogens. They can only act as a biocontrol agent against minor pathogens. These minor pathogens include DRMO. DRMO is an abbreviation that stands for deleterious rhizosphere microorganisms. Under deleterious rhizosphere microorganisms, we have deleterious rhizobacteria that is DRB and deleterious rhizofungi. Those are that is DRF. So these DRMOs or deleterious or harmful rhizosphere microorganisms are minor pathogens which can be controlled, which can be inhibited by these PGPRs or plant growth promoting rhizobacteria by either secretion of some antibiotics or some chemicals or by aggressive colonization of the root which prevents these deleterious organisms from coming near the root. The examples of PGPR a primary example is Pseudomonas species like Pseudomonas fluorescens and Pseudomonas putida. We also have Actinoplanes, Agrobacterium species, Arthrobacter, Cellulomonas which is a cellulolytic fungi, many species of Bacillus, Azotobacter, Seracea, Arvenia, Flavobacterium etc. So these are all the plant growth promoting rhizobacteria and these rhizobacteria like the name suggests are helping in the plant growth either by directly improving the growth of plants or by stopping or acting as biocontrol agents against deleterious microorganisms. Now these PGPRs are influenced by several factors. The first thing being the soil conditions. So they are influenced by the soil temperature, the soil pH, the amount of humidity or moisture in the soil and the composition of soil particles. Now when I say composition of soil particles it means whether the soil is having more of sandy particles, clay particles or is it a loamy soil, is it having more of silt, based on these particles the type and number of PGPRs will vary. Now there are different mechanisms by which these PGPRs are improving the growth of plants. The first one being they provide competition for the substrate and niche exclusion which means they compete they fight with all the other bacteria and fungi which are present in the soil. Those are the deleterious rhizobacteria and deleterious rhizofungi. They compete with all of these organisms, other organisms in the soil which are going to affect the plant in a harmful way. They compete with these organisms for substrates that is the root exudates, some organic compounds or some nitrogenous factors, vitamins, minerals and they also compete for space or for habitat that space is called as niche so they exclude the other bacteria or other fungi from the niche this is called as niche exclusion so they compete with the other organisms in the soil for substrate and for niche exclusion so they can grow on the lateral roots they can cause increased nutrient absorption but in one way or the other they are competing with the other organisms and they are inhibiting the other organisms from growing many of these rhizobacteria pgprs produce plant growth stimulating hormones like gibberellic acid or indole acetic acid. So they pro produce hormones which are going to directly increase the growth of the plants. Thirdly, they show increased nutrient utilization in the soil which means the PGPRs are able to show nitrogen fixation or solubilization of the inorganic phosphates in the soil. This way 
whatever they are fixing or solubilizing that is being provided to the plant and the plant is able to have better uptake of nutrients or effective utilization of the nutrients and it grows better. So increased nutrient utilization is also something that the PGPRs contribute in. The fourth mechanism by which the PGPRs can work is by production of antibiotics. So some of the PGPRs produce compounds which will inhibit the other organisms. For example, Agrobacterium radiobacter produces agrosin 84 which is a compound that is going to inhibit agrobacterium tumefaciens that causes crown gall disease or some of the rhizobacteria produce antifungal metabolites like phenazine or phologlucanols or pyrolinitrin. There are different antifungal metabolites being produced by these bacteria which helps in protecting the plant from those particular fungi. Lastly, they can also produce siderophores. Now, siderophores are low molecular weight ion chelators. When I say ion chelator, it means they are going to sequester, they are going to pull, they are going to absorb all the ion that is there in the vicinity and they are going to make sure that it is going to be released slowly to the plant. So, siderophores are low molecular weight compounds which are helping in ion sequestration or ion chelation. That means they will absorb or they have high affinity to the ion. So whatever ion is present in the surrounding soil, that is going to be absorbed by these bacteria and it is going to be released slowly to the plants. Additionally, when they pull all the ion, when they sequester all the ion, there is limited supply of ion in the rhizosphere. Thus, the pathogens are unable to grow because they don't have any iron to grow. Iron is a trace element. So when the organism, when the PGPRs produce siderophores that sequester all the iron, the iron is unavailable to the pathogens and thus pathogens are being inhibited. So examples of siderophores, a classical example is siderophore that is produced by Pseudomonas fluorescens against Arvinia carotovora that causes rot disease. And the siderophore example or the siderophore type that it produces is called as pseudobactin. So pseudobactin is the name of the siderophore or the iron chelating agent and the organism that produces it is pseudomonas fluorescens. Pseudomonas has been known to increase the crop yields by this production of siderophores. So there is one more example. There is hydrocyanic acid HCN which is produced by the harmful microorganisms or the minor pathogens or the deleterious rhizosphere microorganisms. This hydrocyanic acid if produced by the pathogens will reduce the yield of a plant. This has this study has been done in potato. So it reduces the yield of the plant that is our minor pathogens produce hydrocyanic acid which reduces the yield of the potato plants. If PGPRs are present in that particular soil they reduce the hydrocyanic acid production because PGPRs produce a siderophore which is going to compete for the iron or which is going to sequester, chelate all the iron and keep it with itself. So iron is not available in the soil. Iron which is very important for hydrocyanic acid production is not available. Hence there is no hydrocyanic acid production. Hence the organism is not able to affect the plant. This is how the organism works or this is how the PGPRs work. So I'll quickly repeat there are different mechanisms by which PGPRs work. One is by competing directly for the substrate and for the niche or for the habitat. Secondly by promoting some plant growth promoting substances which are going to help the growth of the plant. Thirdly they help in increase nutrient utilization. This could be by fixing the nitrogen or by solubilization of the phosphates or by pulling the water that is there to help in tide over the water scarcity. Third one or fourth one is by production of antibiotics or by produ producing agents which will directly inhibit the growth of the other pathogens and by production of siderophores. These are the different mechanisms by which PGPRs work. So when you are asked about it in the exam, you need to write about what are PGPRs, what is the full form of PGPR, what are the different examples of PGPR, what are the different factors that affect the PGPRs and what are their different mechanisms which help the PGPR to survive. So every 
प्लांट ग्रोथ प्रमोटिंग राइजो बैक्टीरिया कुड हैव वन और मोर मैकेनिज्म बाय विच इट इज प्रमोटिंग प्लांट ग्रोथ वन थिंग टू रिमेंबर इज दैट दे आर ऑलवेज फाउंड इन द राइजोस्फियर एरिया दैट इज द रीजन ऑफ सॉइल अराउंड द रूट्स सो इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास वी विल बी डूइंग माइकोराइजा थैंक यू